the pond, a teeming microcosm of freshwater life. Each cubic meter of water is home to thousands of tiny invertebrate animals. These organisms feed upon an even smaller assemblage, the microscopic algae which live in the open water of the pond. The microalgae taken in our plankton sample include a variety of diatoms. The diatom cell is encased in silica. This glass house protects the cell while allowing light to enter the yellowish chloroplasts. The protective case has one serious drawback. It's heavier than water. Therefore, if a diatom is to avoid sinking, it must be equipped with some means of offsetting the weight of its protective case. The planktonic diatoms in our collection show two mechanisms for regulating their buoyancy. One is the production of oil droplets. The oil, which is lighter than water, is used as a storage product for energy acquired through photosynthesis. Planktonic diatoms regulate the amount of oil which they produce and in this way control their level in the open water of the pond. The other adaptation for open water life involves the shape of the case. In this species, the glass house is drawn out into two long spines which act as stabilizers and help to retard the diatom's rate of sinking. While diatoms hang suspended, drifting passively with the current, other planktonic algae move through inner space like alien starships. In Volvox, flagella spin the colony along through the sunlit waters. Swimming behavior in algae is often controlled by responses to light. In this case, Volvox moves toward a level of light intensity suitable for photosynthesis. The pond bottom harbors a different assemblage of algae than is found in the open water. Here, the bottom is covered by a thick layer of green material, which invites sampling for microscopic examination. The bottom sample is composed almost entirely of natrium, a large unicellular alga. Organisms such as natrium are extremely important in the ecology of lakes and ponds. Through photosynthesis, these microscopic producers convert light energy into food, food which is passed on to the communities of animals which live in fresh water. Most algae are microscopic. However, there is one environment in which large algae are conspicuous, the edge of the sea. These kelps grow from the sea floor in about 15 meters of water. In a single season, they may grow to 30 meters. The hollow bulb, which tops each kelp, is a flotation device. Another marine alga, the sea palm, colonizes areas of heavy surf. Each alga produces a holdfast, 
which attaches to the rock. The sea palm's flexible stalk and blade-like fronds lower resistance to the passing waves. Because of these wave shock adaptations, the sea palm can colonize the unprotected outer rocks where there is little competition from other seashore algae. In more protected water, different marine algae occur, competing with each other for light and nutrients. Within their fronds live the myriads of seashore animals which rely on these large algae for food and protection.